Hey, what is up guys? This is Zach and today I have a really awesome little product for you guys and this is the Actin Blink Board. It's right there and basically this thing in my mind is a mini boosted board but when you ride it you'll learn that there is nothing mini about it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's start off this video by digging deep into the specifications and what makes it different from the boosted board itself. The boosted board has a full size longboard deck at 38 inches long, whereas the Acton Blink board measures in at around 27 inches, but that's actually quite comfortable to ride and to fit on. And the main difference between the two boards would be the actual ride due to the loaded bamboo deck on the boosted board. Now the main reason that the boosted board is so much more comfortable and bouncy and warm to work with is because of its bamboo deck which gives it flexibility when you actually ride it and that's something that the blink board just can't really hold up to. But you'll soon learn that might be something you want to sacrifice because it's really not that bad. Now the range between the two boards is similar with the boosted board at around 7 miles and the blink board at around 6 miles. And it's about the same story with the top speed with the boosted board dual plus at 22 miles per hour top and the blink board at about 15 miles per hour at its top. Now you might be asking yourself, 15 miles per hour, that's really not that crazy, it's not that fast, especially when you look at the 22 mile per hour spec that comes from the boosted board. But I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys, 15 miles per hour is quite a lot on this board because number one, it's only 27 inches, whereas the boosted board is 38. It's a lot smaller. And if you think about going in the middle of a street or going on the sidewalk or anything like that with this board, it's really quite comfortable and enough. And the other thing that I want to tell you guys is that this board is only 9 pounds, whereas the boosted board is around 15 pounds, and that's a really big difference if you ask me. You can throw this thing in your bag, on the outside of your bag, and it also comes with a little carrying strap, so that makes a really big difference if you ask me for portability. Now moving into controlling these boards, they both have this sort of wireless controller that you turn on or you turn off, and from there you can just control the speed however you want, but there's something special about this that I want to tell you guys about. Basically, when you're controlling the boosted board and you want to engage the board, you hold down the safety and then hit the throttle. But to keep going, you need to hold down the throttle. Whereas on the blink board, there's no safety, which is probably fine. And what I think of as with the throttle, a cruise control. Basically, once you engage the throttle, it keeps it right where it is and it holds itself there on its own, which I think is kind of awesome. See, I don't recommend it, but if you want to do something else with that hand that you would be controlling with it, like catch a Pokemon, you'll have the opportunity. Now, I think of this function as cool for longer distances because believe it or not, it does sort of get uncomfortable to hold down the boosted board's controller and the throttle for a long amount of time. Now, both boards have applications for them, so the boosted board has a very polished, easy to use, and well-built application, whereas Acton's is a little bit more glitchy sometimes, but it works really nicely, and I can tell you it gets the job done. And within all the apps on both boards, you can change from the beginner, the normal or medium, uh, and then the pro, which is really nice to do, but one thing that the boosted had, which I wish that the Acton Blink board has, is that you can actually change which one you're on. So if you press the battery button, you can change it from normal to pro or pro to normal and all that stuff, as well as having a battery indicator, which the Blink Board's remote does not have. Now looking at the big picture with the Blink Board, actually riding this thing is a ton of fun. Getting up to 15 miles per hour on a board this compact and fast is a pleasure. And just whipping through the streets and the sidewalk and getting to where you need to go on an electric board can be a ton of fun. And in the end, the price to performance ratio on the blink board makes it an amazing option to have. Although it is a good bit smaller and it might be known as the mini boosted board, it kills the boosted board in the price to performance ratio and it makes it a really, really good deal and a good buy for you to think about. 
Now, if you're struggling to find a reason to buy a boosted board, this Blink board is right up your alley. It's fast, efficient, has a really nice long range, and it's extremely well priced. And what else could you really ask for in a board like this? So if you're interested, I'll drop a link down below for the Action Blink board. And thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.